Hello friends and welcome back for the last day of your 30 days, 30 minutes a day yoga challenge benefiting St. Jude Hospital. This has been quite a journey that we've been on together and I'm so proud of you guys for making it all the way to the very end. If you haven't already donated to my fundraiser, please check out the link below so that you can benefit all proceeds going to St. Jude Hospital. All right, guys, so let's get into our second and last sequence. So our last two videos were about our first Hatha Vinyasa styled sequence. Today's will be a completely different sequence to get you more accustomed to different styles of flow you can do in yoga. So this will still be vinyasa, meaning to move in a meaningful way, keeping it authentic to you and looking for a balance between physical challenge and mental quiet, mental ease. All right, so for today's flow, the only thing you might want to have other than your mat, no dog required, is if you own two yoga blocks, place them on their highest height at the top of your mat, so the short edge, about shoulder distance apart. If you don't have those, no worries, we'll find other modifications. Get those set up and we'll start out and seated today. Make your way into a comfortable seated position, whatever that means for you today. And place your hands somewhere cozy, thighs or knees or wherever else, and rock back and forth on your sits bones. Find that sweet spot where you can sit up nice and tall, your spine feels stacked and you have room to breathe, but you feel nice and relaxed. Inhale, squeeze your shoulders up and into your ears. Exhale, roll them back and down. And take any other neck, shoulder, or really any other movements you need to help still your body, quiet your mind. Settle into some stillness, then blink your eyes closed or soften your gaze. and start to draw your attention into your breath. Breathe in and out through your nose or your mouth. And connect with whatever you have going on at your home or wherever you're practicing today. You might hear sounds of family or pets, neighbors, sounds of wildlife, flora and fauna, or the wind. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin and the feeling of gravity gently anchoring you into your place. As you begin to notice your thoughts, any time you experience a thought not directly related to the present moment, I invite you to wrap that thought up into a balloon. Thank the balloon for the purpose it once served and let it go. Today, you might have five balloons or you might have 500. Take all the time you need and breathe deep. like, I invite you to draw your hands together at heart center, pressing your thumbs into your sternum. And if you'd like to set an intention for your last mat practice of this series, perhaps you focus your intention on gratitude for yourself and your completion of this challenge, or perhaps you set it on something else entirely. end our meditation with one round of unifying cleansing breath. Deep inhale through your nose and out through your mouth. Now that we've stilled our minds and bodies and found some connection to the breath, let's add in our asana. All right, let's come straight into a quick spinal warm-up or pratapana today. Come on to your hands and knees in your tabletop position. Add any cushion you need for any of your joints today. Make sure you press in that space between the forefinger and thumb to protect your wrist. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze and your tail high for cow. Exhale, curl your chin on your chest, tuck your tailbone, push the ground away for cat. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze and tail. 
Exhale, curl in, separate your shoulders, maybe even press up onto your fingerprints. Inhale, open up your heart space. Exhale, curl in, open the thoracic spine. Keep finding these cat-cow progressions, zoning deeply into the breath. Let's take four to six more of these and feel free to add in some elbow bending, side to side bending, rocking back and forth, or any other organic movement you need to make this practice meaningful to you. Start to meet you back in the center with a neutral spine. And we'll take some barrel rolls to get the rest of our spinal movement. So press your right sits bone towards your right heel Sweep over right sits bone towards the left heel, then press it forward. Shoot back to the right. Inhale, sweep up to the left. Exhale, back to the right. Inhale, up to the left. Take a couple more in this direction, and if you'd like to add in a little bit of belly dropping and back curling up to really get all the spinal motions in there, feel free to do that. When it feels right, switch directions. Inhale forward, exhale back. Take three or four more, lean into the breath and lean into what the body is telling you. Come back to stillness in a neutral spine, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. Now spread your fingers as far apart as you can. Re-glue down that space between your pointer finger and thumb. Tuck your toes and lift your kneecaps up into a brief high plank. Resist the urge to move your feet, bend your knees instead, and press into your hands. Lift your hips up high for your downward facing dog. If your hamstrings feel a little pinchy, press one heel towards the ground. Bend the other knee hard and then switch it out. I like to breathe in as I bend one knee, breathe out as I switch to the other. You might like that or to find a different pattern. And remember, you can always place your knees down or just take a break. And start to meet me in stillness in your downward dog. I made the mistake of wearing my socks today, so if you're regretting it like me, take a moment to pop them off so we stick better to the feet. Meeting me back in down dog, press hard into all 10 fingerprints. Look towards your toes, your kneecaps, or maybe even your navel. Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, press your chest hard towards your thighs. If you want an even deeper stretch, drive your heels towards the ground. Nod your head yes, shake your head no. And find one more deep breath here. Deep breath in and out. Come back onto your knees. Draw your knees mats distance apart. Press your bum towards your heels and reach your fingertips forward for your active child's pose. If your wrists are a little sore from that combo, that's very normal. If you'd like, you can either sweep your hands back behind you or ground your elbows in and lift your palms up like you're praying to get a little shoulder, chest, and wrist relief. Let's take three deep breaths here. One more breath. Release your hands back down. Press back up into your tabletop position. We'll do a little more work with down dog and plank. If your wrists feel like they've gotten so fatigued that this is not doable, I recommend that you start this in, on your forearm. So option A is forearms to protect the wrist joint. Option B is coming up onto the hands for the full engagement and strengthening in the shoulders. You choose what's right for you. So either on forearms or on hands, tuck your toes, lift your knees up into either downward dog or dolphin. You can soften your knees in either one. 
Remember with dolphin, your head is not all the way on the ground. It might be pretty low. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Now inhale, whether you're on hands or forearms, rock forward, pressing your pelvis towards the ground into your high plank. Notice if you needed to separate your hands and feet to get there and try to keep that same alignment the whole time. Deep breath in. Breathe out, lift your hips back up high to downward dog or dolphin. Inhale, rock it forward. Exhale, press it back. Now see if you can make this almost feel like a wave. Inhale like you're diving in, head first, then chest, then tailbone. Exhale, lift up, tailbone, chest, and then press your head towards your thighs. Inhale, dive in, head, chest, tailbone. Exhale, lift, tailbone, chest, gaze towards the thighs. We'll take three more of these. Inhale forward, exhale back. You are a powerful being. You're more capable than you think. One more. And release your knees all the way down. Nice work. Draw your knees apart, big toes together. Either reach your hands forward into your prayer version of child's pose or hands all the way back with chin, mouth, forehead, or cheek down. Take three deep breaths here. Let the fire fade a little bit. Let any echoes pass. One more deep breath. Feel your belly press into your thighs. Then press back up into your tabletop position. All right. From here, come up for one more downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, lift your kneecaps, keep them bent, press your hips high. Find your downward facing dog for one breath. And bend your knees, like towards your hands. Tiptoe your hands and feet towards each other in the middle of your mat and hang nice and heavy. Keep a little bend in your knees. Let your head be nice and heavy and grab opposite elbows. And let's do a little ragdoll sway here. So press your hips to the right, shoulders to the left, and switch it out. Almost like you're a pendulum on a clock. Maybe you like to bend one knee hard as you sway that way and straighten the other leg. Or just keep both knees bent. Check in with your breath. And find stillness in the center. Release your hands heavy and curl up one vertebra at a time while you're stacking the Legos of your spine. Shimmy out your shoulders at the top, adjust as needed, and meet me at the top of the mat. I'll be facing this way so you can see the shape that you'll be facing, the short edge of your mat. Stand there with your feet close together, maybe toes and ankles touching. Inhale to sweep your arms up and overhead. Interlace your fingers together, Release your pointer fingers and wrap your thumbs together. Squeeze your shoulders down and back and inhale, grow as tall as you can. Option A, bump your hips to the left and point towards the right for your crescent shape side bend. Option B, same shape but with the left ankle tucked over the right ankle for a balance challenge and a deeper stretch. Inhale, lengthen a little more, roll your top shoulder back. Exhale, sink a little bit deeper, really push it. To challenge yourself even more, look to your left elbow. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Whew. Come on back up and switch ankles if you took the ankle cross and switch which thumb is on top of your grip. Squeeze your shoulders down and back. Inhale, grow as tall as you can through your spine, through your fingertips. Press your pelvis slightly forward. Exhale, bump your hips to the right and point to the left. Now, a lot of the time we roll the shoulder forward. We want to roll right shoulder back, stacking it on top of left. Point your fingers as hard as you can. You can even look up to your elbow crease. Inhale, lift an inch. Exhale, sink a little bit deeper. One breath into the edge of it. Inhale, lift back up, release your hands and uncross your legs. Meet me in standing mountain pose, feet close together, palms softly pressed forward. Rock your weight into your heels, spread all ten toes apart and ground into them. One, two, 
at a time, excuse me, and breathe into that one continuous line of energy all the way from the earth up through the crown of your head. Let's find our half sun salutation that we took in our last practice. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead, hands can touch. Exhale, fold forward, bend your knees, hands toward the ground, head, head. Inhale, lift up halfway, slide your hands to your shins or your thighs, make your back flat. Exhale, fold, knees bent, head heavy, hands toward the ground. Inhale, rise up, reach up, grab onto the sunlight. Exhale, pull it through your heart and fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Maybe you add a tiny back bend at the top. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Maybe take that tiny back bend at the top. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up, grab the sunlight. We'll take two more. This time I won't provide verbal instructions, but you can always move with me visually. Last one. your hands to your heart. Take a deep inhale through your nose and let it come out your mouth. Good work. Step your right foot forward to the top of your mat. If you have your two blocks, you want it to be a little bit behind those in between the blocks. Take a big, big step back with your left foot. Today we're starting in warrior one, so we want the hips squared towards the front edge of the mat. So pulling your right hip back and your left hip forward as much as you can. Take a deep bend into your right knee and ground as hard as you can through your left heel. Press your tailbone downward. Stay here or draw hands to heart or all the way up to the sky. Keep pulling your right hip back, left hip forward. Press your rib cage downward if it's flared up. Stay here or to challenge your balance more, look up to your thumbs. For more shoulder opening, shimmy your biceps by your ears, squeeze your shoulders down and back. Deep breath in, deep breath out. If you want a little more fire, sink more into your right knee. One more breath here. Keep your legs where they are, but release your hands to your heart and start to pop up your back heel so your heel stacks over your toe mound. Now this is where you'll use your blocks if you have them. If you have blocks, Place your hands onto those blocks and you'll pop up your back leg or your standing L shape. If you don't have blocks, that's okay. We won't get as much height, but we can still do the same shape with our hands on the ground. Notice if your left hip is popping up and open and see if you can drop your left hip to point towards the ground. Flex your back foot nice and hard. If there's a little micro bend in your right knee, totally okay, but avoid any giant bends. Find strength and stability through the right leg and the left leg. Now, whether your hands are on blocks or the ground, play around with lifting one hand to your heart, then putting it down. Maybe the other hand to your heart, and putting it down. Maybe both hands to your heart. Imagine opening up your chest, arching your back just a tiny bit. Take one more deep breath in, and out. Release your hands to the floor or to your blocks and meet me back in standing. Curl all the way back up to standing. I'll turn so you can face me, but you face the short edge of your mat. So last pose on this side is our tree pose. Right foot stance, left toes out, hands stance. Pull your left foot up inside of your right leg. For more hip opening, push your left knee open. Stay here or pull up a little higher or higher or higher. Maybe you pull your hands to your heart or grow some tall branches and lift them skyward. What is your intention for today? If you want to ground and focus on your roots, let your tree be low. Small branches. If you want 
to challenge yourself even at the risk of falling or quote unquote failing, grow your tree as tall as you want and embrace the wind. Three more breaths here. Wobbling is encouraged. Draw your hands to your heart, slowly unwind your left leg and come on down. If your right foot is a little sore, just know that's very, very normal. Once we come off of our feet, we'll feel a little bit less soreness and you're building some great ankle stability. Left side. Face back towards the short edge of your mat. I'm just turning so you can see. Left foot forward, behind your blocks, in between the two. Step your right foot nice and far back. And pull your left hip back, right hip forward, and then deep into your left knee. Notice if this side feels more challenging than the last one. It does for me. Pull your hands to your heart. Sink deep, deep, deep into your left knee. Press your tailbone down, rib cage neutral. Keep grounding through your right heel. Stay here or lift your arms high, biceps by the ears, shoulders down and back. Deep breath in. Exhale, sink a little more. If you want more hip opening, more leg fire, you can stay like this or look up to your fingertips. Exhale, sink a millimeter deeper. Hang in there for one more breath. Release your hands to your heart. Slowly pop up your back heel. Place your hands either to your blocks or to the ground and pop up your right leg. Now drop your right leg towards the ground, flex your foot, and we're aiming for this L shape where the right ankle is in line with the right hip, the right hip is in line with the right shoulder. You can stay like this or hold one hand to heart and then drop it. Other hand to heart and then drop it. Maybe both hands to heart. Arch your back just a tiny bit. Open up your chest. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Now option A is to drop your feet and come to standing. Option B is keep your hands to your heart and see if you can pull your right knee into your chest, straight into your tree pose. If you fell, that's okay. No worries. Meet me there. Right toes out, hands to hips or heart. Pull the right foot up. Maybe higher, maybe not. Maybe still higher. Maybe this side is a little bit trickier than the last one. For more hip opening, press your right knee out. Stay here or grow some tall branches. Maybe your left side is focused more on roots or maybe it's focused more on branches. Maybe you like to take a little windy flow like me or maybe you're just hanging on for dear life. Take three breaths, breathing in gratitude for your body's capability to do this shape at all. Breathe out any negative self-talk. Hands to heart, slowly unwind your right knee. You can shake out your left foot a little bit if you'd like, remembering that soreness is natural. Great job, that's our standing sequence for today. Let's get into our seated and supine poses. If you have a yoga block, you can have one at the top of your mat. If not, no worries. You're using your yoga block, you're facing the short edge of your mat, but then on the highest height right in front of you. Step your feet out nice and wide. Press your heels forward and toes back. Inhale, reach up high. Breathe out, draw your hands to your heart. Start to sink as low as you can, bend into the knees. See if you can draw your hands to your yoga block or to the ground. Let your head hang nice and heavy. Now breathe in, straighten your legs as much as you can. Breathe out, sink your tail down. Breathe in, straighten your legs. Breathe out, sink down. Breathe in, straighten. Breathe out, sink down. Option A, tailbone onto a yoga block with hands to heart. Option B, a little deeper for the hips. Hands to heart, tailbone down, or hands to ground, tailbone down. Option C for even more opening in the hips and the chest. Tailbone down, hands to heart, push the knees apart with the elbows. Option D, deepest opening yet. Make your hands into soft fists and push those apart. Oof. Wherever you are, press your tail forward, shoulders back. You can take a little sway if you want or just be still. 
three deep breaths, breathing in gratitude for your body's ability to access this pose however it did. You are perfect right where you are. Good. Release your hands to the ground, lift your hips up. If it feels good to shake it out a little bit here, feel free to do so. Some knee bends, some booty pop-ins. And slowly make your way all the way to seated. Soles of the feet together, knees apart for your butterfly position. Grab onto your ankles or your feet. And if your feet are a little sore from all the standing poses, feel free to take your thumbs and kind of dig into the soles of your feet. Rub them out a little bit, massage in some circles. Check in with your breath. If you can regulate it here, you'll invite more ease into your feet. And come back to stillness. Squeeze your shoulders down and back, helping to make your back left. Inhale to lengthen like a string is pulling you up tall. As you breathe out, lead with your heart. Keep your back as flat as you can. Start to fold forward. If you like, use your elbows to press your knees open to assist your hips open. Once you're at your very edge and you can't go any further with the back flat, then feel free to curl in. Wherever you are, inhale, lift an inch. Exhale, sink an inch and a millimeter. Progress comes in millimeters and we celebrate every single one. Three more breaths here. Relax your head. Let your neck and head be heavy. Sink a millimeter more and breathe into the edge of it. Slowly curl all the way back up to seated and release your legs out in front of you and hands out in front of you. Slowly find your best slouch and curl down one vertebra at a time, almost like you're a zombie. Meet me all the way on your back. If you have any blocks or things to the sides of your mat that might be in your way, feel free to push those aside now. And once you're settled in, pull your knees into your chest, meeting me on your back. Take a little rocking left and right, up and down the length of your spine. Just massaging at the back. Maybe you draw some circles with your knees one way and then the other. Meet me in stillness with your thighs pressed in toward your chest. Release your arms out like a T. Take a big breath in, pull your thighs toward your belly, and breathe out, drop both knees over to the left. For the deepest twist, look over your right shoulder. Feel free to play with the angles of your knees or even straighten your right leg. Breathe into the right side of your rib cage. Inhale, pull both knees back into your chest. And exhale, drop both knees over to the right. For the deepest twist, look over your left shoulder. Maybe play with the angles of your knees or straighten your left leg. Breathe into your left side rib cage. knees back into your chest. Place your hands on top of your shins and curl your forehead up towards your kneecaps. Inhale, expand your belly into your thighs, compress it. Exhale, release your feet and your arms down. Head, neck, and shoulders rest on the mat. Option A here is to lift your feet skyward, maybe place a block under your sacrum. Option B, which I highly recommend if it's available to you, is to find your legs up the wall position. Feel free to move your mat over that way if that's helpful to you. And remember our easiest way to get on the wall is to bump one hip directly up against it and switch shoulders back and legs up high. Settle in on the wall, not worrying about if your tailbone is pressed right up against it or not. 
And whether you're here or on your mat, feel free to find a little movement, maybe circling your ankles, taking a straddle or a butterfly or a happy baby. Feel free to find a little bit of free movement and check back in with your breath. If you've been finding that constricted ujjayi, start to soften that. Let your breath become a little softer, smoother, deeper and quieter. And whether you're on your mat or on the wall, settle into some stillness. Place your hands somewhere comfortable, maybe hips, chest, one hand to heart, one hand to belly, or arms out like a T. No, shake your head no to relax through the back of your neck. And if you'd like, you can close your eyes. We'll take a good 60 seconds here, just really enjoying the full benefits of this inverted posture. If you are in your happy place on the wall, feel free to stay there for your whole ending meditation. But if you'd like to return to your mat, slowly pull your knees into your chest, roll off to one side. Begin to make any readjustments that you need to get comfortable for your Shavasana. Maybe straightening your legs or readjusting your pelvic tilt. Replacing your hands. Once you're in your happy place, swallow to relax your throat. Blink your eyes closed or soften your gaze. Smooth out the space between your brows and into your forehead. Take a deep inhale through your nose, hold at the top. And then exhale, sigh it out. Let your eyes melt into their sockets and your tongue fall into the back of the throat. Allow your whole body to become soft and surrender under the weight of gravity. Allow both mind and body to still. Enjoy this time to recharge and I'll let you know when it's time to wake up. Start to bring some movement back into your body. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Circle out your wrists and ankles. Maybe take arms overhead and legs long for a full body stretch. And pull your knees into your chest. Wrap your hands on top of your shins or in your knee pits. Squeeze yourself into a little ball giving yourself a hug for showing up, not only for today's practice, but for this whole challenge. In your time, slowly make your way back up to a seated position and meet me there with your hands to your heart center. For today, I'll end with a slightly different mantra or prayer from Sanskrit, the original yogic language. 
Your prayer today is Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. It means, may all beings everywhere experience happiness and peace. Thank you all so much for joining me for this 30-day challenge. May you all experience happiness, peace, and be free from suffering in the world. See you next time.